used to make. I said, Alex, what's this swaffling business? He said, oh, oh yes, it's a uh, Dutch cultural practice. I said, uh, yeah, right, but what does it mean? He said, it, um, it just means to swing your penis backwards and forwards and bump it up against something. <laughs> I said, uh, is this popular in Holland? He said, more so amongst the men than the women. <laughs> I said, how did it become so popular? He said, well, it became very popular through YouTube. You see two Dutch tourists film one another swaffling the Taj Mahal. The footage of this went onto YouTube and went viral and started a whole craze of Dutch tourists traveling around the world swaffling national monuments. <laughs> the Sphinx and the Eiffel Tower. And this got me very worried because, you know, we were spending a lot of money here in Australia on counter-terrorism, but what are we doing to counter the swaffling threat? Nothing. And so I sent a cable back to Canberra recommending a series of countermeasures including biometric testing at the border for Dutch tourists and passing electric current through the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The cable was not well received. But we had a more immediate problem on the base insofar as the Dutch soldiers were swaffling in the Dixies. The Dixies, of course, were the blue plastic portaloos that proliferated around the base. And these, for the Australian soldiers, were, were the dunnies. They were sacred space. This is where your digger writes his poetry. So the future of Australian war poetry was at stake. I had to do something about it. And I wrote the following song called Neat Swafflen Op de Dixie. Which is Dutch for don't swing your dick in the portal. <laughs> I've heard that when the Taliban held power in Kabul They messed up people's lives with lots of silly rules Women were illegal and so is flying kites And God defend the kind of men who like to dress in tights I wouldn't want to be like the Taliban and tell you what to do I'm fighting here for freedom after all, just like you I respect your lowlands culture and I love you very much. But there is one important thing I say to all you Dutch. Good thing she's got the headphones on. It's not suitable for children. Knit, swapping up the Dixie. It's against the law. Sing along now. Knit, swapping up the Dixie. We're trying to fight a war. Yeah, and if you're swaffling in that Dixie like a Dixie swaffling man, how the hell are we supposed to defeat the Taliban? So nip, swaffling up the Dixie. Nip, nip, nip. Nip, swaffling up the Dixie. And there isn't enough room. If I find that you've been swaffling in that Dixie, I'll tell Brigadier Van Oom. And he'll have you court-martialed and sent back to The Hague Where they'll put your dick on a table and whack it with a spade So nip, swaffling up the Dixie Nip, nip, nip Nip, swaffling up the Dixie It really isn't fair There are people who need to use that Dixie And you could swaffle anywhere you could swaffle in Paris, you could swaffle in Rome You could swaffle in the Taj Mahal or wait till you get home You could swaffle in the shower block with shampoo or soap You could swaffle with the RSM or with the fucking Pope But knit, swaffling off the Dixie Knit, knit, knit Knit, swaffling up the Dixie Did you hear me? Or are you deaf? If I find that you've been swaffling in that Dixie, I will call in the SF, it's a special forces, Task Force 55, and the boys from 66 go swaffling at night with black paint on their dicks, and they will find you swaffling in that Dixie, my friend. They'll hard knock on the Dixie door, in which case I would recommend you immediately bend over, place your chest upon your thigh, stick your head between your knees, and kiss your ass goodbye. So, nip, swaffling up the Dixie. Nip, nip. Knit. Knit swaffling up the Dixie. It really is quite gross. 
Once a week they clean those Dixies with a great big vacuum hose. And if you're swaffling in that Dixie on a lazy Saturday, you may find yourself fellatioed in the most unpleasant way. <laughs> it'll grab you, it'll suck, until there is nothing left. What's the BDA, that's the Battle Damage Assessment, gonna say about your cause of death that you died? Swaffling in the Dixie. Nit, nit, nit. Sing along now. Nit, 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 all together now. Nit, 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 Swaffling up the Dixie. Nit, nit, nit. Anyway, this song, Nit Swaffling Up the Dixie, has proved very popular with school children in Canberra. <laughs> if you'd like to get a copy for your grandkids, it's on my CD, The Dust of Uruzgan, on sale over there for $25. Or if you've got a couple of grandchildren, it's two for 40. All my other songs about war and death are on it, and the kiddies love it. Uh, but if you'd like something a bit more cerebral for your father, you can get my book, The Dust of Uruzgan, selling for $30. If you want to make your old dad really happy, you could get the Dust of Uruzgan combination pack for 50 bucks for Christmas. For Christmas. Who needs a combination pack for Christmas? Think, think, think. I'm saving you a lot of trouble here. <laughs> There's also my new CD, Great, and uh, a few others there. But um, anyway, the Dutch eventually left Uruzgan province that summer in 2010. Some people think this happened as a result of the collapse of the political coalition in The Hague. But in fact, it was my prohibition on Dixie swaffling that broke the will of the Dutch military, um, such as it was. And, uh, and they were pretty morose about leaving. You know, they'd vested a lot in the province and they were pretty down at, down at mouth by June that year, but their mood improved in uh, July when the chips came, when, when, uh, when, uh, sorry, I got distracted, when, uh, when Holland got to the World Cup soccer final, the Dutch, of course, are moderately interested in soccer. They were so excited about this that they draped every available vertical surface in orange fabric, including their interpreters. And they filed into Poppy's, the barbecue area there, and watched the match, which started at midnight in Tarrant Cart and ended at 3 a.m., Three minutes to go in extra time when Spanish centre Andres Iniesta drooled a sneaky Spanish kind of goal and of course the Dutch were morose and I had to do something to cheer them up and so I put on a concert which was my solution to most problems. I put together a little band with the Dutch legal officer and a couple of nurses and the new quartermaster Bainsey there in his best pair of shorts. <laughs> you can take the boy out of Queensland. 